guys, it's Mirika, and so today I'm going to be talking about my opinions and discussions on free Dive Into the Future episode 2 and 3. I know it's a different format, but the reality is um, my house is being renovated and there's a lot of loud noises in the morning, so I can only really film at night or film in the morning without voice. <laughs> and if I filmed at night, especially with my face, it looked like an interrogation scene. So I decided to do this kind of format uh, and just keep talking and then showcase pictures. And I decided to put the two episodes together because I didn't do one last week. Uh, but I had more to say this week. So yeah, so with that, let us get started. So with episode two, I felt that it was a good episode. <laughs> Uh, in that you finally see Mharu and Ikea meet for the first time in years. The episode goes to a back and forth of the past uh, and then also the present. Uh, the past deals with a lot of things that happened in high speed uh, after probably the movie. So I go back to the fact that I t say like you actually should watch high speed for that fact because there are some confusion with some of the fans that haven't watched the four movies uh so going on that but it was a really cool thing to see them in the past after that movie and interacting uh and you get a lot more of the feeling for ikea and why he is hurting so much because he wanted to be uh, like haru and then haru just left and then everyone else just left also so you get a feel for him from there. I also found it really interesting that Iko's reaction when he saw Haru was very nonchalant. He wasn't angry like how Rin reacted when in the first season when he saw uh, Haru again for the first time. It was very like, hey, like, like what are you doing here? Kind of non-confrontational, um, which is very different. Uh, I guess like I've been used to like a lot of <laughs> a lot of the people in free always being angry when they see each other <laughs> after a while but uh, I guess the next person I'm gonna talk about is the one that's taking on that role which is Hiori which is Ikea's uh, best friend now who is very very possessive of Ikea Ikea's well-being and like it's almost like he's a very obsessive boyfriend uh which i think you should like back off a bit he's like the fake makoto uh <laughs> that everyone was saying he was he like makoto he's not uh and he needs to chill out like 10 like uh, like zero like 100 from zero right now uh but as episode three which i'm going to touch on in the later part of the video i kind of understand where he's coming from from this obsessive kind of well-being of Ikea which I which I will get into uh, and then the end card for this episode was when you see that Natsuya which is Ikea's older brother uh, is going to the Australia gym and will meet Rin so overall the episode was pretty okay I feel like it was not filler but a little bit of it was filler I just felt like it it pushed the story along into giving a backstory but it wasn't like action packed as the first and the second, uh, third, third episode. But it was still a good episode, I feel like. Uh, now moving on to episode three, we see that Ikea is actually struggling from meeting Haru. So before he didn't really look like it bothered him, but in his performance, you see that he is pretty bothered that uh, Ikea has been shaken up and. The reason why he decides to do individual medleys is because he doesn't want to count on people uh, on leaving him uh, like Haru and Asahi did. Uh, but the main focus of this episode is actually on Rin and Natsuya's experience uh, where Natsuya trying to get into Rin's swim team by auditioning, not auditioning, but like by kind of showing his skills to the coach who's actually a muscle enthusiast, which is a very, there was a very funny scene uh, where Natsuya is trying to bribe the coach with magazines and then Go appears like someone's talking about her and that was just really funny. There is one thing I want to say about this anime which 
I really like from a personal standpoint because I study stuff with language and like bilingualism and stuff like that. I really like how this anime is keeping with the English and the Japanese. Uh, of course, not all anime can do that. It's just the happen the voice actors in this anime can speak English. I just really like how when Rin is talking to an Australian person in the scenes, he's talking in English to them as opposed to Japanese. But then he switches to Japanese when there's a Japanese person talking to him. And the same goes for Natsuya. I really like how they kept that aspect in the anime, personally, because it seems so cool to do that. Because I feel like in a lot of animes, it's seen as a comedic uh, thing that the person that's speaking Japanese doesn't know that much English and then they have like this whole misunderstanding and can't function in a lot of animes uh, but also I really like the fact that I don't know they they kept going with it and I know it's not feasible in all animes because if the anime is set in London such as like Black Butler you can't have the whole cast speaking in an English accent in the Japanese uh, subversion or sub Japanese dub version. I mean, uh, that was, would be left for English, but I really like how they were able to keep that kind of thing in this anime. Uh, okay, so I us talk about the language. And we move to uh, Rin and Natsuya meeting up and eating dinner together, and we f Rin finds out that he knows Haru and he's. Rin feels pretty bad that it was the reason uh, that Natsuya believes that Haru left because of some reason. And of course, if you watch the first season, Haru left the swim team because of something Rin did, and he felt really bad about that. And the next thing I really liked about this, where I mentioned that Hiyori's actions are kind of understandable, but he still needs to tone it down. I'm gonna say like a. This is a little of a trigger warning if you deal with anxiety and depression because what I'm going to say, so skip this part if you want, if you don't want to do that, if you want to not listen to this. Uh, so as I mentioned, Hiyori is very obsessive on Ikea's well-being as we realized in episode 2 where he's about to drown because he's trying to be good like Haru. And as you can see, he's like working really hard in the individual medleys just because of he wants to take everything by himself. So Hiyori, and there's this scene where Hiyori texts Natsuya about how Ikea is doing, how he's not, something happened, like he's not doing as well because of what Haru did, which I, I get it, like Hiyori is trying to look out for Ikea's well-being because it seems like, to me, because I have friends who've experienced this and personally have experienced that is that when you're depressed or you're anxious, you have some things that really uh, trigger your <laughs> feelings, if there's a better way to say that. And he, um, he already being the friend of Ikea, seeing him go through it and knowing about it, like his confident, he wants to make Ikea feel okay, so he's trying to limit like Ikea's triggers such as Haru and Makoto, which I completely understand he might be going around it the wrong way, uh, but there's not really one way to do it uh, when you are dealing with someone of that uh, kind of caliber. So I saw it as Hiyori is trying to pick Ikea from Haru because he doesn't want Ikea to be like what he was before. So I might just be looking into this a lot more than I should, but I felt like that kind of scene, like that's why Ikea, uh, that's why, um, excuse me, that's why Hiyori is so on edge when it comes to Ikea meeting up with Haru and he says no you're not going to meet up with him because he doesn't want Ikea to be like that but that's just how I read it it might be different to how other people read it so with that I'm going to actually move to the end of what my feelings is is that the next episode is going to deal with the confrontation between Asahi, uh, Makoto and Haru to Ikea and when they have the day off and I'm really excited I'm been very excited to watch all these free episodes and 
this story is heavily focused on the college life. So it's sad that we don't see Rei and Nagisa and Go and Momo and Tori and Sosuke as much, but it's understandable. But of course, it's only episode three. They might have a bigger role in some other episodes, which I really like because I think there's uh, one of the uh, swim club members was mentioning that they could compete all in a tournament and you still can compete with the college and the high school life, which I'm pretty sure might happen in the end of the series. But with that, thank you so much for listening to my talk. I was about to say listen to my TED talk about free, but yeah, let me know what your feelings are and discuss them in the comments. I will gladly talk to you guys about it. I love free so much. And yeah, so with that, thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!